Hi everyone. It's good to be back here. I'm so happy I can get back on. It's been quite a whirlwind and it seems like I'm trying to squeeze things in every minute that I can to make sure I'm getting something done or completing a task or <clears throat> whatever it may be. Um, I wanted to make sure I got on here before the end of the year to offer a tarot reading in the midst of the winter solstice and the planetary conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter and all of the magical things that are happening on the earth and in the air and in the universe right now. And I'm excited to use a new deck that I received as a gift from a dear friend called the Herb Crafters Tarot, which I imagine you're all going to love. <laughs> um, I just went for a walk in the woods and brought some tea and some offerings. I had some dried calendula flowers that were really seedy, so there wasn't much I could do with them, so I brought those out with some bird seed and left them as an offering to the birds. Um, and it's a very beautiful day out in the forest. <clears throat> <sighs> so I'm just going to take a moment to ground myself um, and offer you some words of wisdom and hope and healing. What I also want to do along with this tarot reading in the notes you know, of this post, there'll be directions to a link, and that link will take you to um, Carla Sanders, Carla the Cosmic Crone. If you've listened to the podcast, you know who I'm talking about. She just released a solstice ritual around womb healing, and it's absolutely beautiful. I listen to Carla a lot. It's very soothing and healing. I rely heavily on um, my elder teachers, the women in my life who are 20 some odd years older than me, have much experience and much wisdom to share on healing and ritual. And Carla is one of those women. So I wanted to share it with you. The link will send you to <clears throat> a Dropbox website. If you have Dropbox, it'll just open in your app or on your computer. If you don't have Dropbox, it shouldn't matter. You'll see a button that says open in website and it'll open in the Dropbox website instead. And you should see a video and an audio file. And um, you can use whichever one you want. They're both the same. One is just her voice and one is seeing her as well, which I prefer. And also a link to the donation basket. She's asking for donations for this beautiful offering that she's giving. And I made a donation myself because I want to support Carla and all that she does. She does amazing, amazing work for us women. Um, but I wanted to share it with you as an additional tool um, <clears throat> over solstice and this holiday break. Something that you could dive into <clears throat> and do some healing work for yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm drinking um, rose kombucha. It's the best kombucha I've ever had. It's so delicious. I highly recommend. <laughs> so let's get to it. The last few nights over solstice, I've had lots of dreams. I've had a repetitive dream where I'm out in public or with a group of people, which certainly isn't happening right now in the waking world. But when I'm with these people in the dream time, nobody's wearing masks including myself, and in the dream I'm shocked, you know, I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be covering, um, but everyone's so calm and carrying on with their business, and it's like, in the dream, it's a good feeling, it's like an amazing feeling, and it, <clears throat> three of them in a row, my grandfather used to say three, three repetitive reoccurring dreams in a row, as a prediction of the future. I hope he's right because the dream f 
feels like something's lifting off, like um, some sort of clearing, and it feels very hopeful. So here's hoping that those dreams are some sort of prediction of a near future ability we will have. Um, and also, as I guess hunting season is coming to a close, <clears throat> I'm not 100% certain on that, but it certainly seems that way. The coyotes have reemerged. They've been in hiding as well as the deer. Uh, the animals, the wild, are very smart. They know when humans are arriving. They know our rhythms. They they know our behavior. So uh, normally, you know, we have a plethora of wildlife here, but they do completely disappear in hunting season. And most hunters in my area don't really find much. <laughs> so anyway, the coyotes have reemerged, and in the night. They have been um, calling uh, in the dead of night. It's really quiet and still. And there's one lone one that has come very close to my house. <clears throat> I can't tell if it's from the front or the rear. But it's very close. I can hear all the vocal tones, um, the shifting and changes in the tones, and this kind of yip at the end. And the first night, he was completely or she was completely alone. You can't really tell the gender by the tone. I've tried to research that and there is no suggestive uh, science that says you can tell the gender by tone. Um, the first night <clears throat> it was just the coyote and I really felt like it was singing to me. It was the only one awake and it was just so dead, still, quiet. And the sound was so clear and so close, and I really felt the energy of the animal uh, so near. And I just, I do have a great connection and love and respect for our wild animals and our wild dogs and wolves and coyotes. Um, they're just so intelligent. They really have a lot to offer us <clears throat> spiritually and energetically um, and last night uh, it came again and was singing and this time it was singing to its family and so after the first call or two I heard in the distance um, the rest of the family and it was a beautiful beautiful sound it's a very joyful celebration when they find each other so lots of good forest medicine going on around here and I encourage you to if you're feeling <clears throat> the stress and pressure of the end of the year and feeling feelings about not being able to connect with certain people you want to connect with or be in person I encourage you to sink deep and immerse yourself into the nature around you whatever's closest to you in whatever way um, and reach reach for the healing and communication. You know, listen, watch, observe, feel, sense, um, hear, smell, taste. Just immerse yourself in it and see what what comes of that for you. Uh, I find for me it's extremely helpful. So, the Herb Crafters Tarot, here is the book you can see what that looks like. This was a gift, a Christmas gift, and what a gift it is. Um, so I'm going to just pull a couple cards for us, or even one card, whatever comes about. Just about whatever it is we need to be hearing in this now moment, this, this group of fellow spirits in my Patreon group. What is it? What are the, whoop, there we go, <laughs> the words of wisdom, I'll do one more, that need to come forward for everyone here today. Okay, three cards, this is a new deck, this is only the second time I've used it, so, okay, first one, second one, third one, let's take a look, I've also got my clear kind of calcite here and I don't I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera on my laptop here but it's it's really covered in 
rainbows. Um, it's just this beautiful light spectrum, and so I keep this near me just to add some additional light into the energy around me. Okay, so remember this is the Herb Crafters Tarot, so we're working with herb cards here. So I'm just going to take a look for a moment. Oh goodness me. And um, I think what I'll do is read you the short description that comes with them and then I'll have like my own intuitive reading. Uh, the first card um, is the Hija of Fire, the California Poppy. This one was upside down. So we'll see if you can see that. Just try to move it around to see if I can. So there's lots of um, like calendula looking like flowers on the table in front of her. And she's got this crystal ball. Uh, so let's see. Fire, he just are the daughters. Page 90. Let's see what it says. There it is. Create with the enthusiasm of a beginner boisterous play, then sweet sleep. Light up the landscape with golden joy. So usually when a card's upside down, it means it's coming. Maybe it's not quite here, or you haven't quite done it yet. Um, magical objects lie on a bright yellow table. The light is so hard. It's so it's white, snowy light today. A stuffed tiger. A glitter wand, a small cauldron, and a mortar and pedestal. Pictures of poppy plants are scattered about like oracle cards. Real flowers frame the edge of the table. A child wraps her dirt-stained fingers adorned with flashy jewels around an amber-glazing amber ball. The hija of fire jumps at the chance to be creative. She cannot wait to begin a new project. She approaches everything with the playfulness of a child, knowing the strong elixir of California poppy creates magic. She takes small but confident steps towards independence. She may have watched an elder many times, but now she makes medicine for herself. Just as the California poppy flowers light up dry, Wild desert meadows with their brilliant color, she stays open to the light, sways with the wind, and radiates delight. Some crafting ideas with this card. Crafting fairy dolls from poppy flowers, spending time gathering California poppy in a wild meadow, or do a little gorilla gardening with California poppy seeds. Sprinkle joy everywhere you go. And at this point in the winter, if you do grow poppies and you have the dried poppy flower heads, you can give them a little shake and maybe create something with them too. And so the next one is the world Pachamama. Here we go. This beautiful card here. Hope you can see that all right. It looks a little bleached out. It's very deep greens um, and colorful. Let's see. The world. Healing. I take this card as healing. Healing the world. Which is what we have been up to past four years, or at least this year. Weave a rainbow that makes the world whole. Share your sacred work. Love wins. An elaborate altar lies on the grass in the center is a hand-woven basket filled with colorful rainbow mandalas made of flowers, red poppy, California poppy, dandelion, motherwort, borage, alfalfa, red clover, and yarrow. Four sets of stones mark the cardinal directions, the herbs from the aces and anchor the corners, joined by the objects representing each of the elements, feathers for air, shells for water, candle for fire, and crystals for earth. 
a monarch butterfly lands on the basket. Fulfillment and satisfaction come after great achievement. You have accomplished so much. The garden is lush and thriving. Life is in bloom. Pachamama, world mother, is the sovereign de deity of Inca mythology who represents all that is whole, beloved, and complete. Like you, she's a being of great power who has the ability to create life through joy and pain. The lessons you have integrated on your journey may present themselves as if new, but honor them as the herbs of the aces are honored, and old friends who come bringing new gifts such as monarch butterfly returns. Completing the journey of migration, the cycle of life goes on. So spread joy and peace by decorating, making, and wearing art with colorful rainbows. Promote and share your work. Sign up to teach. Be a part of a virtual craft fair. Sell your things. Submit an article for publication. Make a mandala to mark a significant moment in your life or in your community. Here it is one more time. Pachamama. Let's see. That's a little, there we go. That's a little better. Beautiful. I love this deck. The last card is amazing. I'm going to look for it for a second. And um, five, So five of air. So we're looking at air. And this is new to me, so here we go. Five. Hmm. Air, water, earth. Here it is. White sage. You can see that. Okay. Long held beliefs may not be rooted in reality. Well, isn't that a true statement? <laughs> I'm going to read that again. Long-held beliefs may not be rooted in reality. I couldn't have said that any better. Refuse to go along with the crowd. Believe the threatened, oppressed ones. A healthy white sage plant grows in a pot on a well-worn concrete doorstep. The plant is small but strong. The home is old but well cared for. A basket holds sprigs of freshly harvested sage. Several leaves are wrapped into bundles with red string, and the loose leaves will be saved for medicine. Nothing will be wasted. A spiritual crisis challenges long-held beliefs. Though your conscious pulls at you, you are reluctant to let go of your opinions Rise to the challenge. Accept the truth. White sage has become a trendy spiritual tool. It is sacred to many of the indigenous people of North America whose traditions are widely misused. Development and erosion also threaten their survival of the species. White sage is teaching us to protect what is holy. It rids the air of toxins, but is also a valued medicinal. Clear the path. Listen to others and make room for healing. Seek a solution that is beneficial to all. Familiarize yourself with the origins of your spiritual tools, where the botanicals are grown, and where the practices come from. Get to know plants local to you for burning and sacred rituals of your own making, like cedar. Listen to the conservationists and support United Plant Savers' effort to preserve plants. So here's my take on this. Right now, we're in the shortest, darkest days of the year. We're on the cusp of the light returning. We have been through so much this year. We have lost. Many of us have lost. We've all lost something. We, we are all grieving in a way, in, in our own way. And not only that, we have shape-shifted and transformed and, and he done a lot of healing work, um, shadow work as well. So we've accomplished an immense amount of evolution this year alone. And so in these next few weeks, the last weeks of December, I'm asking you to remove 
the feeling and the sensation of the need to continue to accomplish just for these few weeks. Let everything be, let everything settle. See how much you can fit rest into the hours of your day. What does rest look like to you? Is it reading a book and laying down or sitting by the fire, listening to something while you cook, taking a walk in the forest, sitting silently by a tree? I mean, there's so many, uh, take a bath, you know. What does it look like for you? And then how can you fit it in to the hours of your day? Even if you have children, or if you have a family, even if it's just five minutes of listening to meditation music and breathing. I want to encourage you to take these final weeks of the year 2020 for you to sit still and to not push yourself anymore, to rest, to integrate the healing that has been done and allow your body to process the way it needs to because it knows how to and soak and nourish and love and tend to yourself as if you were a sacred temple because you are. <laughs> So creative work, crocheting, sewing, you know, whatever it is for you, dive into those powerful tools that you have and spend the last few weeks of this year going inward. You don't have to listen to anything on the TV or news or to, you don't have to listen to anyone's opinions or thoughts. Use your boundaries, use your healthy, compassionate boundaries, say no, you know, excuse yourself from anything you don't need to be doing and rest okay thank you so much um, for being with me through this year and um, there is no podcast episode with a guest for this month and that's okay everyone is doing you know finishing up the year but also resting and kind of going inward so everyone's kind of taking a pause which I appreciate um, in January we're gonna kick off the podcast again I have two women um, lined up that I'm very excited to share with you. Um, more healing, more access to tools and understanding and practices and education around wellness and love and healing. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that next year we can reopen some community gatherings in some way or form. But I want to take this moment to thank you all sincerely for being with me this year and listening <laughs> to me and sharing your thoughts and being present when you can and just simply being a part of what it is that I do here at Mountain Hollow. So big love, lots of huge hugs to you all. I love you. Sending healing and loving awareness, mindfulness, crystalline falling snow from the sky to you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>